Hey, we are live. <laughs> we we're live. We're asking ourselves questions there. Hey guys, <laughs> welcome to episode 26 of the weekly. And with me here is, of course, Mr. Warren Bowman. How's it going, man? All right, thumbs up. Let's do this. We're halfway through. Yes, uh, the gang is not fully here. Uh, Mr. Nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Juan Magnell is out of town, and uh, internet speeds are not helpful. And um, Black Iron Man will be joining us, as you expect. So let's go ahead and kick things off with some uselessness of the week. Um, I was asking, the whole PewDiePie, Warner Brothers things, was it this week or was that last week? That was last week, but uh, okay. it was a, we can talk about it, though, if we yeah. want to add that to... to uh, no, I thought we, for some reason, I thought we covered it last week, is why I'm, I was a little confused, or maybe we didn't. Well, we can talk about it, and why uh, not? Okay. Go ahead. Introduce right. the story for us. Yeah, so the, the other one's going to be very quick. So, so the uh, yeah, so the, we have two uses of the week. So, the first one was with Shadow of Mordor. Now, Shadow of Mordor is uh, a game based off the Lord of the Rings uh, universe and is a Warner Brothers game. And that game was well reviewed. I've played the game. Sam has played the game. A lot of people like the game in general. So, for me, it was shocking to find out that Shadow of Mordor had a sponsored campaign. Now, if you guys do anything, let me explain sponsored campaigns for you. On YouTube, a lot of YouTubers do sponsored campaigns. Even I do, uh, Warren does. We usually mention it's a sponsored campaign. Now, the general idea of a sponsored campaign is a company wants you to highlight certain features, but state your opinion. So whether it's highlighting the fact that, um, you know, they just added this 14 megapixel camera and then you can state your opinion of whether you think the camera is good, great, whatever. If you want to compare it, that is your choice. But they usually do that. Oh, Mr. Juan Bagnell is joining us. How's it going, man? Uh, it's going well. We'll see if we can uh, hold up here. Uh, apparently, Texas is not my friend when it comes to high-speed data. That's, All right. Uh, that's Optimus Prime. Yeah, Optimus Prime <laughs> is joining us via audio because also, he's fighting the Decepticons. Just, just a sad note, I believe AT&T's headquarters is in Dallas, Texas. Um, well, actually, I'm on a Verizon device, which is really struggling to pick up <laughs> LTE right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to break in these Moto Zs, and uh, yeah, Texas is just not having it right now. So okay. hopefully I can hang on for a little bit, but I might not be able to stick around for the full show, guys. Uh, okay, all right. So, so we'll jump to you first. So we're, we're talking about the first uselessness, which has to deal with PewDiePie and some other YouTubers doing, um, giving positive reviews to, Sh I think, believe it's Shadow of Mordor. And I was explaining mm -hmm. to users what sponsored reviews are. Now, one of the big things in this sponsored review is that when you read the breakdown, it says clearly, basically, I'll just summarize it. It says uh, you cannot state anything negative <laughs> about, oh. about the product. Womp, and, womp. and you can only state only positive things about the products. Red wow. alert. It's pretty rough. Yeah. Red alert. <laughs> so, you know, this is not one of those campaigns where you do have campaigns where companies say, look, we want you to highlight things. You can state whatever you want, but these are the things we want you to, to look at in our, you know, in the sponsor campaign. Now, mm -hmm. again, this is kind of, it, to me, it's a little strange because the game itself is a very well rated game. It's a good game. Um, so it's not a game that I, I think even needed that much help in the first place. Right. I, guess, I guess marketing felt like they needed to do some stuff. So, Thoughts on that, uh, uh, Optimus Prime? Yeah, no, I mean, this is definitely sort of how our industry has become compromised um, in where things are being monetized and where we're looking for partnerships. Yeah. It's very frustrating to see these types of things go down because there are perfectly reasonable ways to engage in a discussion on a game where we don't need to call these things reviews. We can call them, you know, this is a sponsored post for this video game, or this is a, mm -hmm. an overview, or a first look, or a hands-on. You know, all of these ways that we have to properly disclose to our audiences that this is not supposed to be taken as... I mean, and people will draw their own conclusions from that, but we can disclose and say, this is what we're doing. We're not really crafting a review because this is a sponsored video from this company or this agency. And then also it really speaks to the tone of the relationship between uh, PR and the YouTube producer. Because if PR thinks that they're going to be able to generate good buzz by tying the hands 
of YouTube producers, I, I'm shocked that people still need to learn this lesson, that the second this is disclosed, that you know they weren't allowed to say anything negative about a game, it instantly taints every single review of that product. Yeah. No one will take those reviews seriously. No one will, everyone will act as if there's something that, well, maybe they paid off this other person and I can't trust this. Or, and, and it does a, a whole disservice to the entire chain of product, uh, PR, YouTuber, and the audience. Just everything across the board gets compromised when, when they do business this way. And, it's, and again, it's disappointing and it's shocking that any company would still think that they can pull this off in an age where this stuff gets found out, it gets leaked, it gets disclosed. Um, this is not the right way to go about doing business, and it's, it's a shame. Um, I'm going to go to, to Warren. I wanted to add this, and maybe more you can expand on this, is that uh, is this is something that, I mean, it, it is shocking, but knowing gaming and the gaming PR culture, uh, I'm not calling any names. I, I wasn't too surprised because... Um, just from my own personal viewpoint, gaming and tech have, have PRs have a very different way of handling things. And also, again, as for tech YouTubers, we know very well ourselves. I'm just talking about the three of us, including Sam, is that we know if we fib something or if we miss something, we usually get called out faster than we can actually drink tea <laughs> in the morning. So um, it's one of those things that I think really plays a very different role. But I wanted you to add on that, um, uh, Warren. Uh, yeah, the like you just said, the two the two uh, industries, PRs, and the way they handle marketing and uh, promotion of a product are vastly different. And definitely, when it comes to the media outlets that put out the actual reviews of content, gaming. This has been going on for a pretty long time. This isn't all of a sudden some big news. The reason it got kind of big is because the name PewDiePie was attached to it. So there's. I kind of understand his sort of argument that he said the Verge just used my name to just kind of get clicks to bait into a big story because probably nobody else's name on there is as big as his of course. on that list. So, yeah, um, that makes sense. But this has been going on for a long time. It's something that in the, in the tech industry that, like you said earlier, anybody gets, tries to somewhat do this, your credibility is kind of shocked because it's, it's very hard to kind of uh, fib in that way or not be truthful in that way without somebody calling you out and um, not that it doesn't happen there, there it does happen but it's far few and different between the most popular people in the tech space versus versus the most popular people in the uh, in the gaming space um, what's what's disappointing is, is that from what I know the game didn't need it didn't need this type of uh, PR no um, the um, it's kind of showing that a lot of uh, YouTubers still don't quite understand business and legalese, and, and kind of reading through the the um, the copy that you usually get when it, when it comes to what the campaign is, and seeing that there was two red flags there, and not mentioning saying, "Hey, we can't do this because of two red flag, you know, these things here." But then there's probably a dollar amount there that just kind of makes it, "Oh, well, we can just bypass this because." will never get caught or something like that, or everybody's doing it and such. And it, it, it's just disappointing that um, even the YouTubers themselves will just jump, them, jump their way into this, knowing they've probably done several of these, these, these gaming sponsored reviews and know better than to just only say positive things. Those should have been huge red flags. It's just, it, 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 to me, it's, I think for everyone else out there, it confirms stuff they've already suspect, suspected about, uh, reviews within the gaming industry. Um, we've heard smaller incidences of these type of things kind of happening before um, with game reviews. But what I what I what, what what I think for me and for everyone else that's in this chat, this is like mm, it's been going on. It's old news. It is what it is. And uh, maybe they'll do something to change it. But um, and dealing with gaming and PR, this will probably continue going forward for a long time because it's the way that PR works, it's very, very much on controlling the voices and the narrative. That's why you see a very skewed view of people that actually get review copies and official reviews and stuff ahead of time. And if you notice, they all tend to say the same sort of thing going yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, to, to that point, I mean, it really does feel like a, a huge swath of the traditional gaming media has become severely compromised over the last couple of years, not necessarily just for this issue of 
sponsored reviews or paid reviews or, or, or this situation, but then also the, the idea of adding agenda and a narrative to that too. So even if we feel like an outlet isn't um, kowtowing to producers or getting paid directly for their, their content, then we end up with game writers or game publishers who don't seem to like gamers writing about like gender <laughs> issues or politics or something like that. Uh, yeah. And you're like, it, it's, it's been really frustrating. So, I mean, for a lot of my gaming news, I'm, I'm more apt to go to Metacritic-style scoring just to kind of get an overview of whatever compromised reviews are out there. And then I'll head over to Reddit and read through whatever subreddits are specific to a game just to see what the audience who cares enough about a game to create a subreddit is saying about the game. Um, yeah. That's kind of how I got my, my news on Division, right? Uh, was, it wasn't from any media outlet. It was from Reddit, watching the initial surge of all these people, like, oh, my God, this thing's the coolest, and then watching it descend into, oh, my God, this thing's so broken. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it, I, I, it's I haven't found... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. It's, it's almost better in the in, almost in the gaming uh, world these days to read the reviews on purchased webs um, or somebody purchased it on Steam or someplace else. Oh, totally. See what people say on there versus what you get out of the uh, what you get out of uh, gaming media and press. Not to say that there are some really good ones, some honest ones out there that will put out solid reviews that usually match what's already been said in the comment section of a purchase page. But uh, like you said before, it's a very it's very severely compromised to the point where you really have to dig through to try and find an honest opinion. That's that doesn't feel that's being you know skewed a certain way. All right, let's move on to Mr. Division, Sam. Uh, we're not talking about Division here. We're talking about the fact that um, <laughs> <laughs> supposedly I'm supposed to be part of that Division crew, and I'm terrible. I'm holding the team now. Um, uh, we're talking about the fact. What do you say? I didn't say it. You did. You know what? You could have at least said, it's all right, Thunder E. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, not, it's all right. You, you, catch up you know what? Whatever. You know, let's sk skip him. Skip him. We don't need him here for the rest of the <laughs> no, I'm just joking. But uh, we're just talking about, uh, if you just give, briefly uh, give your thoughts on the fact that the news came out that um, uh, Shadow of Mordor, uh, the game, had paid reviews and paid positive reviews where highlighting the fact that they couldn't state any negative um, comments about it and any positive Oh, you've only seen only positive things about the game itself. And one of the big people who was mentioned in that uh, whole campaign was uh, PewDiePie, uh, as well as, you know, other YouTubers. But uh, we're just talking about, you know, the culture and also the fact that, at least in the tech industry, in the tech segment of YouTube, you can't really fib because I think more is more aligned to the fact of the cost of the product, too, to a certain degree, in the sense that, you know, someone's buying a $600 phone. Right, compared to a fifty dollar game, and that person spending time for a sixteen dollar phone will do his research compared to the person on a fifty dollar game. I'm just putting it out there, but your thoughts? Oh, I thought you were giving your thoughts because you just kind of. <laughs> <can't go. laughs> Sorry, I know I kind of mix it in. My apologies. So, Sam, basically, I just need you to agree with under E because he nicely summed up how you feel about this. So, I if you could just do that, that would be great. Agree. Thanks. Agree. No. <laughs> agree. Let's move on. No. <laughs> It's, 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 it's actually kind of interesting um, when it comes to a game, and we forget that these games are turning into mini um, movie productions. We're spending millions of dollars on getting the game done. So there is a vested interest by the company to basically make a pretty good return. Um, when you talk about something like Shadow of Mordor, it's actually really surprising when you hear that they there was like paid reviews for this because at the end of the day that, that was an amazing game. Told you. That was a they, game. What? I told them you'd say that, but yeah. I just wanted to make sure that you said you it without me winking at you. You could jump right into it and just get going. It was one of the actually the only really good like you know action RPG I've played in quite a while. You know, I can ju you jump in, you play it, you're done. I can get into it after not playing it for two months, mm -hmm. and I'm good for playing it for like a good couple of hours, three hours. Yeah. It wasn't the greatest game in the world, but it was good enough to basically stand on its own. It was a different take. But you can tell that because it was a totally different take, a totally different story that they weren't really um, comfortable with. They went the route of paying for reviewers 
you know, to uh, to go ahead and um, and review it. But at the end of the day, I think it lies in the hand of those people who actually accepted this deal, right? Because you you know it that we've had situations where we could review something and give it a great review uh, because it's with PR people that we know and we're comfortable with. But we said no, like we we can't review this because I wouldn't use it. I could actually build better, so take it back and make improvements. We've done that. So it, it comes to the integrity of the people reviewing it, not just the fact that you know they're offered money. Anyone could be offered money to do whatever. Integrity doesn't lie with the person asking you to give up your integrity. It lies with the person who is giving up their integrity. So that's where I think the responsibility comes. So guys, um, not not to to interrupt. I I'm I'm I've already dropped even just the audio side of this a couple times. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna jump out um, <laughs> just because it's uh, this is super spotty. Um, but uh, real quick, uh, was there anything else that we wanted to to try and cover while I seem to have some kind of connection here? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the second uselessness was Skype ditching eighty percent of Windows Phone. Oh god, that made me so sad. <laughs> <laughs> um, Skype will be officially dropping Windows uh, Windows Phone eight support in October uh, at eight point one. Which is eighty percent of the market for Windows Phone. So we we talked about this a little on the Pocket Now podcast. I'll use this to wrap up, and then I'll bounce after this point. Um, it, it's again, what can we always complain about Microsoft? It's not that they don't make good products; it's that they are terribly yeah. inelegant at communicating with their customers. Yeah. And we know that there are major changes coming to the Skype platform. They're, they're dumping peer-to-peer, -peer, right? It's going to become just a regular sort of cloud-based uh, messaging service. Yeah. Um, so it's understandable that they want to move forward, and the backbones on Windows Phone 8 doesn't necessarily support where they want to take this new service. So what do they do? They take a hatchet to 80% of their <laughs> current user base to manage this change. And it keeps, it keeps happening where we have this Microsoft uh, strategy. Oh, well, you know, we're not going to give Windows Phone 10 updates, official updates, out to the Lumia 1020. So instead, we'll offer you this really great trade-in deal so you can trade your Lumia 1020, which has a camera, which is still unlike any other camera on the market, and you can get yourself a Lumia 950. How special is that? You know, people who like their 1020s weren't going to make that jump. Uh, again, it's just... I understand why they need to do this, or why why they feel they need to do this. But watching, uh, I can't pronounce his last name. It's a Rudy Hune, the yeah. Windows Phone developer. Yeah. Watching him blow up Microsoft tweets over this has been, you know, like it been totally fitting. Here's your number one developer evangelist for the Windows Phone platform, Only freaking one. out, and and he's not wrong. You know, the way that they're handling this is inelegant and ham-fisted and potentially severely misguided in trying to usher users over into their new software and their new services. And I can't say I'm horribly surprised. I'm just disappointed. You know, so, like they keep they keep not learning these lessons every time they make a major change to a part of their platform. Sounds a lot like what they did with OneDrive. Oh, totally. Again, and, and watching that because they just didn't they finally, finally for reals pull the plug on free storage for reals this time. Like, wasn't that just a couple weeks ago? <sighs> I, I don't even know. Um, See, yeah, like the, the only right response is to attention. sigh <laughs> and to shrug your shoulders <laughs> and then Stop. to like say you know, like this is ridiculous. Um, but isn't that uh, maybe I'm just jumping on, uh, on on the personal responsibility bandwagon today? But you know what? <laughs> we're, we're, we're stuck in this cycle of this freemium model where people give away things for free and then they shrink the market so basically they blow the market up so much so when they get a critical mass they can start charging for something. To me that is what they did with the whole OneDrive thing. You know, no, but, see, but the problem is they didn't do it well. They no, they did not. Yeah, I mean, they did not do it well, but the customers, the consumers should have said, you know what, we don't want to use your service. Tell us why we should use it, especially after they made the first change. After they made the first change, people should have just left. But people stayed. Stayed people for st what? For what? For okay, OneDrive. I, I don't think, I don't think that many phone? people. I don't know. OneDrive. OneDrive? No, 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 no. There's a lot of people that dip the hell out. 
I mean, well, they have people that did, but I don't think it was it was enough for them to <laughs> run it. Yeah. No, they didn't know. They didn't care because all they cared about is getting paid users. They wanted to get out of consumer free storage. So this is the best way for them to do it. They they yeah. they didn't care. They they were hoping people would leave in masses so they only could have to deal with people that are paid. They did. They, that's what they wanted. They wanted up that bottom line. They didn't give a damn about how many, how many people they might have pissed off, or give a damn about ever actually offering services for the way people are using your platform. That's the greatest free data you can ever get. Google seems to master that shit. Hey, people are using our platform in a way we did not expect to use. Let's offer something to it. Yeah. No, but but you look at what you're doing with the Skype thing. Um, basically, the people who are using Skype on Windows Phone, they're not paying for Skype. Right? They bought the phone for a totally different reason other than to use Skype, right? But it built up such a user base. They've probably introduced it to so many other people. And probably Skype business is probably built out of the whole fact that there's so many people using Skype free that now they can afford to say, hey, 80% of our user base, eh, whatever. You well, don't matter. Well, the, you don't well, make us money. Let's keep point, going. But you go to the point. The point is very simple. It's not necessarily 80% of the user base. It's the fact that in, one, in Microsoft's tier of products, right, at the very bottom of that tier, the lowest point in the depths of hell below Microsoft is Windows Phone. That is where that product language is, which is why they are very comfortable in going like this. Like, yeah, you know, I mean, we're not going back to hell anymore. That's, that's how they look at it. I mean, I mean it's true. Because, it's true because yeah. they look at it like basically, you know, the death of Windows Phone is upon us. And, and they're basically, the, you know, it's time to give it up. And, you know, time to give it up on Windows Phone if you have one. They're fully committed to Windows 10 Mobile. And I honestly think Microsoft should look at giving it up soon anyways because as soon, as soon as this Surface Phone flops, focus on apps and services. Give it up trying to make mobile devices. I'll, I'll, put, it, I'll put it this way, it's right? It's a done, done, done deal. I'll put it this way. Um, I went to Windows event last week. That's, you know, Windows PC event. Um, and they were showing me some cross uh, software functionality with mobile. And of course, you know what device the person was using, right? 950 XL. What's wrong with you? Man, Galaxy S7, man. Come on. Let's get it real. <laughs> she needed to have a good phone. <laughs> oh, no, you're talking about what she was using. I thought you saw was using for the demo. For the oh, demo. She... Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's just, that's just to tell you that. It's not no longer. Uh, I mean, the company will tell you they're going with that software all-around approach. That is the company tagline. But it's simply the depths of hell have been cut off with Windows Phone. So if you're a Windows Phone user uh, and you're still you're watching this and you're still on there, just leave. I'm telling you, it's, it's pointless to stay around. It makes no yeah. sense at all. Uh, Android or iOS, it's just going to be better for you. Yeah. Um. You know. So that's just where it is. But let's move on to our first uh, main topic that we finish out to uselessness. Is uh, Verizon is looking to purchase Yahoo? It looks like Bloomberg stating that uh, that deal might be closed next week for five billion dollars for Yahoo's core internet business. Um, any thoughts on that? On Verizon picking up Yahoo and how that thing will play into? You know Verizon's portfolio of products. People just shaking heads there. You didn't I say said, a name. I said Verizon. But you didn't say who. I just Sorry. said anyone. I know. <laughs> Why are you switching things up? You usually say you know, Sam or somebody. Okay, fine, Sam. Sam, you want to you want to jump in? Because it looks like Warren's not ready yet. I'm not ready, but I'm just waiting for you to be organized. I don't understand what Yahoo's doing. I, I seriously, I don't understand what Yahoo's doing. But Yahoo's dead, though. Yahoo's just like 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 that, almost at the depths of hell, too. No, they have. <laughs> they, they have, but they had an opportunity to spin up their um, stake in Alibaba and do something new and innovative, different, and they decided not to. And now they didn't sell. Um, they, they plan on selling the whole company. It's kind of weird because they've made investments in things that just didn't really make. Any clear the, the only good investment was Alibaba. That was the only good yeah, investment. That's the only good one, so like in, in, in recent memory, because even when they, I think they owned uh, what's it called? Um, they owned they owned Flickster and, and Tumblr. And Tumblr and and, and I looked at it. It, it was one a pretty of the, bad purchase, right? No, no, Flickster, was, Flickster, Flickster was not even a bad purchase. Flickster was Flickster when they bought it was a year or two before um, Pinterest came out. Right. Granted, Pinterest is not big, but Pinterest has stabilized itself. And yeah. Flickster could have just been that option. Flickr. Yeah, uh, Flickr, sorry. 
uh, that's his fixer. There could have been that option, but it, whenever they bought something, they did not know, they had no idea. It almost like, it was almost like they bought it for a uh, share price bump. Almost like saying, you know, Monday morning, when this news drops, <laughs> oh yeah, we're going to go up to $14 a share from 12 and hopefully it rises without thinking about what you do with the company. To me, that's what it seemed like in the first place. How about you, Warren? Yeah. It sounds about right. I mean... <laughs> It seems like what they're doing for the purchase here is they're, 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 if you live, read through it, they're actually kind of splitting off some of their business units and kind of selling themselves off from the pieces without really saying it, just selling themselves off from the pieces. It looks like you know they, they have the internet business, they have sort of the sales and marketing business, and then they have their patents. And it looks like they're like, hey, Verizon, you get this, this, and this here, but we're going to keep this here, or somebody else is going to buy another piece of this. So it seems like they're 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 keeping quiet, but for what it looks like, if you read through it, they're kind of piecing themselves off yeah. and and selling to the to, selling to the highest bidders as they possibly can. The reason I think they're keeping it quiet is they're trying not to let the stock price obviously get affected by um, hearing that they're you know splitting up and getting you know yanked all around. True. So, long, so they can keep spinning and selling off certain businesses until they get to a point where they have what they want as a core that they know they can sell off. And then you officially hear, you know, this company has purchased Yahoo fully, and then the Yahoo brand is now a subsidiary under another uh, bigger brand at that point. But um, it's 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 been a well, it's been a while. Yahoo's been up for sale for I don't know how long now, and they've been looking to try and move. The reason they couldn't move before is because it was just too big of an entity to try and buy. If you look at their business model and everything that they have into it, from their internet. Internet business alone has several new commodities, including, including a huge fantasy sports uh, uh, medium with it. You look at their and advertising finance. as well, finance. too. Their finance. What is it, Sam? Sorry. Yeah, finance. Yeah, finance. Their finance. Uh, they, have, they, have, they have, still have a huge email uh, client, uh, yeah. client as well, too. It, they, there's, that's a lot to, for a company to buy, especially for the people that could probably buy that. Already have those things. Google has all those things to offer maybe outside of a fantasy sports thing, which is not a thing that they would get into. Uh, Microsoft has many of those features already, or if they are if they don't if they don't have it, they're funding another company that's that has it and they've joined did it already joined partnership with them. That really limited the number of people that could really buy them as a whole. So it just makes sense that they're selling themselves off. I wouldn't be surprised if they do spin that fantasy sports thing into something else and we hear a DraftKings or a somebody else Come along the line and buy them up, buy that part up, because that's really, that's like the the big piece of Yahoo. A lot of people want. They take that up, and everything else is just should be easier easier for another company to digest to digest into their uh, business. Well, for Verizon though, I, I, looking at what I, I don't know, maybe Verizon's trying to become a, a service provider or a content provider again, because they're bought AOL. So they have a lot of that AOL content. That yeah, I think I, I think you're right. They do want to be because they also have they've been they have pushing Go 90 too. Yeah, they they're that. pushing Go 90 hard so much, and I think picking up Yahoo because Yahoo Yahoo's to Yahoo's biggest uh, physical presence is the Yahoo mm -hmm. homepage. Um, not necessarily the email. All those other businesses probably make more money than the homepage. In you know, in advertising, whatever the case may be, but that homepage is such a big physical presence that you know people just go and, and check out Google homepage. Yeah, it's very you know. So it's something that I think for for um, what do you call it again? Um, Verizon, it makes sense to add to that AOL portfolio and you know put things together and see how that goes. But I don't know. Goodbye Yahoo seems at least as we used to know it. We once knew you. Yes, and it all it all started when the CEO, the the founder of Yahoo, didn't want to make changes. Mm -hmm. Way back when, that was yeah. like 10, 12 years ago, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. They waited too long. They waited too long. Marissa Meyer could have been an, an amazing CEO for that company, and when she came in, there were people complaining that she's trying to, you know, take away this from them, or she's trying to have people work. A lot more hours and all the other things. It's just, I think in, in the culture at Yahoo it just seems as though they weren't they, they weren't uh, an organization that were prepped for change or were used to change and that wanted to change. I guess so. I mean that that seems the way, the way it is. All right, I mean, that's, the connection is crazy. Like Warren just went straight to uh, just a photo now. I don't know what's going on. 
Um, uh, next uh, topic here, Verizon, it's not Verizon, Samsung, I said Verizon, uh, Samsung is now cancer suing um, Huawei. Uh, so earlier this year, Huawei sued Samsung for some pain infringements, and Samsung's like, all right, fine, we'll just do the same thing. Um, <laughs> how long do you think this will last? That's just my question here. Do we move forward? <laughs> it's just negotiations, man. I think even they said it when Huawei sued Samsung. They said they basically want to just settle and get like a really good uh, patent to share. So, yeah. yeah they're just yeah, I mean, what this, what this does show, I think, um, shows to Samsung that Huawei is a serious threat, though. They like kind of take them a little more serious because they're 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 performing very well against them and markets outside of the United States right now, and that that's something that's saying something considering they're not in one of the biggest markets in the world. Oh, well, they're in it, but not as in it as heavy. Um, so they they will most likely settle out, get patents and all this stuff, cross licensing, all that stuff kind of done. And but it it just it's just one of those things. Samsung suing them kind of proves that Samsung takes it very very seriously, and that means Huawei's making really serious dance. Like that number three isn't just a number three because the other two. Are so much farther ahead than them. It means yeah. that they're 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 there and they could they're, 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 they're possibly move past you. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure they'll settle. Let's move on to some interesting iPhone news. So iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Pro or 7 Plus will be, according to our favorite leakster on the web, Evan Blast EV Leaks, will be released in the week of the September 12th. So it looks like even Apple is, you know, because usually Apple does towards the end of September when they release it. So it looks like Apple might be moving things up, according to him. And he's usually, what's his percentage of being right? Should I say 90%? Is 90% right all the time, Warren? Yeah, sounds about right when you're yeah, getting so, information directly from the source. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, uh, whatever, I don't know why we still call it leaks. I mean, nothing, but, nothing's leaked in the tech industry anymore. The last damn thing that was leaked was the iPhone 4. <laughs> or the last damn thing leaked. Yeah, that's so true. So here's nothing's an, leaked anymore, folks. Here's an image of the iPhone 7 itself, right there. It's got a camera bulge, um, and you can see the the extra white tapiness right there on the top and the bottom. Yeah. yeah um, so that that would be the mo most besides the camera hump, but that just that white uh, band there will be. A bands big, and make them bands. It will, will be a big uh, differentiating factor for the iPhone um, 7. Now, I'm just going to show you the iPhone 7 Pro. There's actually a video out there, and I'll have a link for the video for you guys so you guys can check out. iPhone 7 Pro has a different camera humpness. Bam! Dual camera-ness. iPhone 7 Pro, iPhone 7 Plus, we're not sure, but... That's that's what we have there. We have a dual camera, and then regular iPhone 7 has a camera hump. So it looks like Apple is joining that dual camera fray for their larger devices. And also, we still have that bandness. At least I like the silver and black band. What do you guys think? The black one is different. I like it. The silver. That, sil no, silver and black, I mean. Yeah, yeah no, having it on the having it on the silver phones, having it banned in the silver phones are less to me intrusive as the, the pink, on pink and white. <laughs> rose gold, I'm sorry, rose gold. It's pink. It's rose gold, man. It's Apple. Rose, rose gold. gold. Trust gold. me, get your gold right. Don't be like me when I did my Nexus 6P unboxing and getting crap all the time for saying the wrong type of gold. Well, what's <laughs> it called again? Uh, anyway, about the camera, <laughs> what do you, what do you guys think? Uh, Warren, how about you? What do you think? Uh, the camera up is what it is. We know we're going to see those cameras at building better, bigger sensors. Deal with it, you know? That's just what they're going to be. It's not that serious of a deal. I think the bigger deals with this is that they're essentially going from the Plus line and changing it to a Pro name, most likely to match their iPad Pro lineup. Um, there's going to be no headphone jack, most likely, with this, which is, I think, the bigger downside of this, especially for audiophiles out there and people that have premium headsets already, that they're going to have to, one, either buy an adapter that's going to be pricey, or two, have to buy a pair of headphones that support that lightning adapter, which are also going to be pricey. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, you're right with that. The word is that it will be bundled with a lightning to audio jack adapter. Um, yeah, just like, just like the Moto Z. And one thing, I just sort of caught you off where I just wanted to state this quickly. One thing I noticed with the Moto Z is that plugging in that headphone jack, it's fine, right? You listen to music. 
But when I was take, walking around with the uh, the regular Moto Z, you know, battery life is dying. You still listen to music. You want to try. Uh, I was very happy that I had a Moto Mod, but not every phone is going to have that. And also, you don't want to also buy an extra accessory, right? So that there's, there's always there's always going to be an extra cost just because you've now taken away a headphone jack. Yep. Think about it. Just because you've taken an, away one port, there is now an added cost for the consumer. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, push, it's, pushing, it's pushing the cost of a jack that costs some pennies to put into the devices and making a profit off of it by charging the consumers that. That is complete and utter bullshit. Yeah, true. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah, that, that is very true. It doesn't take away from the, from the overall ergonomic for the phone either. Uh, no, the it's, phone it's all it is is a money-making scheme. Yeah, yeah, you're right because because it's, it's you, like you say, you do the math, right? For Motorola, it is either you spend... You spend fifty dollars for that motor mod, right, to power your device. Or Apple, you will buy yourself either a new headset or, um, you know, uh, an adapter that allows you to charge and listen to music at the same time. Well, well what, I, what, I'm, what I'm hoping is, is that if people that buy these phones, circumvent the fuck out of all of that, and just go buy Bluetooth headphones from one of the better Bluetooth headphone manufacturers out there. And then, and then just completely not give these guys the money and the little cheap, the little, the little extra, extra yeah. coin that they're looking for. I really would appreciate it if they did that because then that, that that will one help get more attention to Bluetooth audio, which is vastly improved over time, and and probably will allow more improvements to happen. And 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 two, it will prove that people aren't going to just sit here and take you, jabbing them and and, and nickel and diming them. For a headphone jack, I mean, we have companies like Samsung and LG and HTC that are sitting there improving the headphone jack and improving the quality and audio, and and, and hopefully, I think, and looking for ways to improve the Bluetooth audio as well too, to give you the options between between both. You have headphones now that now uh, you have high end headphones that now come with not only a quality uh, 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 jack to plug in, but are also Bluetooth enabled at the same time too. So you have options between the two of them. And, but this whole USB audio or lightning headphone jack nonsense is exactly what it sounds like. It's nonsense. It's a crap. <laughs> it's pure, unadulterated yeah. bullshit. Yeah. And this is coming from a guy that doesn't have the headphone wall behind him. Okay. No, no, you're literally trying to close your ecosystem again. Yeah. That's just really stupid. Well, well what, what else do they have to close? Like, what else the hell do they have to close? Why close it? Why close the headphone? It's already ecosystem? closed off enough as it is. I, I, I'm telling you, when people buy that phone and then they realize they can't use a headphone jack or they got to have some stupid adapter with it, the amount of whining and complaining for pretentious iPhone users on the Internet is going to be awesome. There's going to be some stupid Twitter Twitter hashtag about it, you know, headphone issues or something. They're going to they're gonna find a way to have another one of these headphone gates or whatever the hell it is. For iPhone users, it's gonna Lightning be a trending topic. <laughs> it's gonna be a trending topic, and it's gonna be hilarious. Watch the shit like break or something every time you try to plug it in. See, doesn't my, recognize the audio. And, and, and that's, oh, the, God, that's, the, that's the sad part is that there is absolutely no need to take that jack off. There is no need to at all. Zero. Completely. <laughs> so, so you know, you know, especially especially if you. Um, you know, it's one of it's, one, it's like I was talking to you. Remember, when we, remember when we were talking to the guys from Focal Audio, uh, Sam at uh, Pepcom, and yeah. uh, so when I talked to one of the engineers, he said, "Look, Apple Apple is well known to not have the best audio from your headphone jacks in the first place." Um, so he already is, is putting his like, "Well, if we go by that term, I don't think they're going to do much with the Lightning port in the first place." So you're still, if you're one of those who is an audiophile, you're still going to need a, a DAC for it. So you're going to need a DAC if you're one of those kind of people. Uh, I'm going to sell you that DAC through that stupid lightning port. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a DAC that requires a lightning port jack. So and you're not buying bucks. It. Yeah, and meanwhile you've spent, you've already maybe you, you spent two hundred dollars for a DAC three years ago, four years ago. That DAC is yeah. solid. You don't need to change it. It's been good for years. Now it doesn't happening. work. Doesn't work with the, uh, the <laughs> lightning port. I, 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 so you have to buy a lightning port based DAC to get all the features and add along with it to plug it in. And it's all, that DAC's going to cost you anywhere from seventy nine to ninety nine dollars, or some probably probably two hundred bucks at some point for <laughs> one of those in there for the DAC that plugs into the <laughs> lightning port, so you can listen to your audio through there because they don't want to built in a DAC inside of it. It is utter 
utter bullshit. And it's, it's uh, just it's amazing. A pretty bad idea. I mean, you look at an idea of basically sharing audio with friends, right? You go to a friend's um, spot, you want to connect to audio, and most of the time people have those line ins, right? You yeah. just plug the line in and you go, I mean, you can't do that. Yeah, because they want, I mean, they want to, they want to, I mean, I understand you want to move everything to Bluetooth, but also even that to it, it's not as convenient as I agree. You just go in and you plug it in, and also the fact that, um, yeah, every Bluetooth technology is also different. I mean, it's just, again, it's just a waste of consumer time. I look at it and money. Basically, this is the accessory game that Apple has gotten into, especially when they kicked out their major accessory partner, aka, um, what are they called again? Mophie? Okay. Mophie, yes. You know, by doing that case, that they made a statement saying we are going to make more accessories that you will buy directly from us. And so, charge a premium on top of it because yes. we're Apple. So now we're, we're going to make money. you buy the new iPhone 7 Pro with the dual cameras, and you're going to need this lightning port jack to plug on the bottom of it that has a DAC inside of it because you want that high-quality audio and use the fucking built-in Pre-packaged headphones that come with it to listen. <laughs> <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yeah. That is. If I see someone doing that, please smack them. No, record them and make fun of them while you're recording them. Let them know you are an idiot. I can't wait to see that. Oh, God. Um, Kyle uh, Rogers says they just want it to be slim. It's not a model. Enough. Everyone loves skinny models. You just, you just want it to be nice and slim, man. Like slim. Just keep it slim. Yeah, no, no one's playing that one. I, I just want to see what they try to spin. Like, what feature is this? You know, I want to hear the spin. I want to hear the spin, Doctor. I want to hear the spin machine they're going to do with this. And how many uh, How many of the tech press are going to be honest about it? How many oh, of them are going to be honest? People are going to clap when they're announcing. People are going to clap. They're going to clap. As, 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 as Robski, as, as one of our... Uh, you, YouTube tech friends that we see at many events, he loves to stay there at Apple events. They say, damn, you know, they act, they, when, when they announce something, people start standing up, clapping harder than life. <laughs> 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 but he said that on Facebook. I, I'm sorry. No, I but, lost but it. Already it started. I know The Verge did an article on why, <laughs> on why you know, light, lightning port for audio is the future and it's what we need. Paid because, because, <laughs> because we can we can push more audio quality through that, and I'm going. Nice. I'm like we can already do lossless audio, which is the highest thing you can do anyway of a 3.5 jack. So what's the point? You still need a DAC. Damn it! I'm I'm calling it right now. I need Thundery to do a border work exposing that exclusive, exposing that crappy Verge article. You need I, to expose it, man. I'll, I'll do it next week. And, and, and get and get the and get the sound guy, Mr. Juan Bagnell, into this whole <laughs> yeah, thing as well too. You need, you need, there too, needs to be yeah. a new segment called Border Work Expose. That's what you need to do. <laughs> you need to expose the nonsense. Exposing uselessness. Exposing uselessness. <laughs> Exposing uselessness. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pass it out a bunch of uselessness and zeros. There's a lot of zeros that need to be out there. Everyone's, everyone loves to pass out L's. There's some more L's that need to be passed out. <laughs> L's all damn day. Exposing uselessness. All right, we've got one. So uh, <laughs> stay tuned, guys. Stay tuned. We'll, we'll try to have that for you. Um, uh, according to T-Mobile, T-Mobile will be taking pre-orders for the Galaxy Note 7 next week. Event is on the August 2nd, which is actually, what, Next week, basically. <laughs> no, no, it is. No, no, a week and a few days, roughly. Yeah. Yeah. So it'd be funny because the pre-order will probably say, "Sign up to pre-order the next Galaxy phone." Yeah. <laughs> Won't even say the number on it. They can't. They can't say the number. They anymore. can't say yeah. anything on it. They're just trying to get ahead of everyone else. Yeah. So which means uh, the device is launching very soon. Very, very soon. I mean, I imagine a week or two after it's been. Yeah, announced. yeah. I, I was thinking a week or two, but a lot of rumors are still pointing to day of. Like, you can go and get it. or Which is why, because Timo has never done an, a two week early pre order for a Galaxy device. I mean, the only thing, only thing I could think with that is, is that they may have gotten this, maybe some type of US exclusive on that, similar to, to what. Uh, uh, the one Verizon did with the one M9 not too long ago when it was like the the only one that was day of and everybody had to wait about a week. Yeah, but I, I don't think I don't think um, Samsung's doing any exclusives like that anymore at all. I yeah. think Sam 
I think I think they just well, maybe letting T-Mobile do well, the T-Mobile, pre-orders well, early. Well, T-Mobile, T-Mobile sells a lot of AT&T money to do that one with, so <laughs> they might <laughs> still spending that AT&T money. <laughs> uh, you're recouping it quite well. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it on the news segment. Anything else you you want to mention? Any any other things you missed, guys? Because I, I think it was pretty it's pretty short week in terms of news. Yeah, I uh, think. Um, not, not, not really in the tech space. There's the whole Ghostbusters thing. They still took a whole other video to talk about. You don't okay. have to see the film to know just the drama. That's the drama and the spin um, cycle and everything that's been around this film without you even seeing the film. Everything okay. just going around. I've just, before we continue, I've just got corroborating evidence for. Um, uh, I just forgot the video title. I need to write it down. For the work expose. No, 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 epic use away. Oh, uh, ex- exposing uselessness. Exposing uselessness. Yeah. Thank you very much. This is. I just went to Masterable and it said, phones without headphone jacks are annoying as fuck. Thank you. <laughs> Good God. We fought hard to just get the damn headphone jacks on these things. And now you want to take them away. <laughs> We're getting DAX on these things and improving audio. You tell me... That that lightning port is going to sound better than the HTC 10's headphone jack, especially when I plug in my Yeti, my uh, my blue Lola headphones to them. Fuck you, no it don't. <laughs> like seriously, spinning, spinning, spinning. I gotta watch the spin, folks. And it's uh, I, 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 I we could go on to rants for I think days. And I'm I'm more of a Bluetooth audio enthusiast, as you guys know. I'm more into like I like to have the wireless audio because I think especially if it's done right, like uh, Plantronics does a great job with the backbeat sense. Oh. Done very very well, you get some great great audio quality uh, the, out the of the backbeat, headphone. The backbeat headphones are what Sam is wearing right now. You can see yeah. Sam. Could you turn to the right or left so people oh. can see those headphones clearly? Thank you very much. That is the Plantronics Backbeat Pro Plus. Now this is not a sponsored or paid segment. Mm-hmm. We're just telling you what it is. Yeah, those those are <laughs> those and the um, and Jabra makes some great Bluetooth headphones as well too and they're all using the 4.0 technology and they sound great and it, 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 the more we promote that I'm, I'm, I'm all for that but it, it, we're, we're far away It'll probably, we'll probably have to get to like Bluetooth 7.0 before we get to a point where that wireless audio matches exactly what uh, a, a high quality DAC and headphone jack can accomplish. Yes, yeah. um, and it, that, that's just that that's 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 just um, there's there's two things in the way of, of that really happening. It's getting a DAC built into a, a DAC on a device that can work with Bluetooth to transmit that quality or really accept that quality to be able to to do that, and then making uh, drivers big enough on headphones that have long enough battery to be able to get a good music session out of it because right now we've got great battery at a lot of these Bluetooth headphones, which was not the case years ago, like two, three years ago. These were some shit. You, you would get, it was like the audio quality is finally there for about an hour. <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe through a workout, I don't know. Although <laughs> I will tell every, although I will I'll profess everyone, if you're not using Bluetooth with, with your workout, if you're not, you don't have a pair of Bluetooth headphones when you're working out, you're useless. Oh, wow. You make no, no, it makes no sense. It literally makes no sense. I love it. It's like you're useless. Um, anything else? I know we went back to this topic I mentioned, but because I, I, I'm pretty sure we're not the only ones pissed about that. And, you know, and you can see people in the chat are like, "That's bullshit!" Yeah. Like to, to to spread just lies in Verge. Obviously, that's what you call us paid fucking sponsorship. And whether they didn't want to say it or not, it, 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 but that's a paid post, and they're just sitting there saying. Yeah, see, this is why we don't need headphone jacks, you know, iPhone folks, because Apple knows what's best for us in terms of design and making things a lot slimmer and having the improved audio quality that some 50-year-old technology just can't quite um, live up to still to this day just makes a lot of sense. We see, this thing with, with headphone jacks. Fuck you. If like... you go back to the old Nokia phones, right? Nokia was doing TV out from headphone jacks. Headphone jack, yep. Back in the day, TV out. The battery for TV, whether it's even standard definition, is much higher than audio. That's just how it is. Hell, <laughs> I, I, I use my backbeat sense, Dan. I have the, he has the pros. I use the uh, this version here. We have a review on the channel of these. And I love them. 
and I use them all day long, but when I'm on a train ride, I even plug in my headphone jack. <laughs> I'm on a log train ride, I say, you know what, let me take, I usually I usually carry these around, my the Hyper, HyperX uh, Cloud 2s. Yeah. Plug, plug those in, booming great audio sound quality out of, right out of my Nexus headphone jack, which is a pretty quality headphone jack, because DACs are technically nothing new, it's just that they're Promoting what they um, do now. promoting what they do now. VP Lawson says the world of headphones is useless on the next iPhones. All my headphones are useless if they do this. No, the iPhone is useless to the wall, so it gets yeah. chunked away. Ah, out the window. But anyway, I mean, we'll see how it affects Apple. I mean, you know, will will Apple users finally rise up? Will they finally say, you know what, I, I don't know. No, but also, you're, again, you're talking about people who bought the iWatch, the Apple Watch. Well, but here's the thing, buy, and, and all the Beats purchase, how, how many of those Beats headphones are going to be lightning enabled so they can scare oh, yes. more people? Yeah, so the thing also is here is you now have a situation where I saw a survey where they said Apple, only 21% of Apple users are looking to upgrade to the iPhone 7, which is about the same amount as the iPhone 6. So Apple is now going through this same upgrade cycle rots where they're not capitalizing on their whole user space. If, it's only, if you're doing 21%, that's not high. Yeah, is that the same 21% that upgraded from the 5 to the 6, or is it the next 21% that basically already had a 5, didn't see the need to go to a 6, but now see the need to jump to like, you know, skip the 6 and go to the 7. So it's actually very interesting. I think it, it might be a combination of the almost yearly release cycle that everyone has, and also the fact that, you know, the change between one version and the next isn't that great anyway. Yeah, I, I think it's a change so because you know. because Samsung has at least shown growth by making changes. And they have, it, uh, they have that luxury of two devices per year to effect that change through. You know, it's always the the S line and then the Note, and when you get to the next S, you're like, oh, okay, wow, wow, this is so different. Um, is, maybe Apple is missing that. Maybe Apple needs to switch that to device strategy uh, or or something because it seems like Apple, Apple right. iPhone 7 Pro with Beats Pro headphones, lightning mm -hmm. enabled. Oh, wow, yeah. Apple, 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 what? I'm sorry? No, no, I didn't think about the iPhone 7 Pro and Beats Pro. Like Beats Pro, match. lightning match. enabled, a little bolt on it, like do, 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 zero. <laughs> yeah. with Apple Bluetooth, which is essentially Bluetooth 4.0. Oh my Thanks. God! They will. They would so rebrand Bluetooth. Wouldn't even be funny. They'd do it. They act like they. They act like the damn thing never existed on the phone. <laughs> nah, that never was there. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's just interesting uh, as a whole. Um, let's see. Any have to turn the AC on because uh, it's, it's getting hot in this spot. <laughs> this heat is uh, is. Well, isn't we are all are in the inner city, so. <laughs> um. Let's see. Um, I think that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. What we have. Um, we are on time this week. I mean, we just kind of rambled on one last topic that <laughs> went on and on. Uh, I'll just tell people go watch Star Trek. It's cool. It's fun. Yeah, Star Trek left me very good. Yeah. Just it's it's it feels like a Star Trek movie. Trek of the Star Variety. Yeah. So anyway, we've got to that point where we find out what uh, we had on our channel and what we can expect next week. So, Mr. Warren Bowman, it's you. Well, the most recent video that I posted up is five fitness gadgets that you can use while playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> there are uh, listed about five different, a couple of headphones, a couple of fitness bands and wearables that you can use while you're walking and tracking all your fitness and doing all that sort of stuff while you're playing Pokemon Go, because so many of you are out there exercising for the first time ever. That's what walking wow. is. Talk about just, like, my bass <laughs> in the audience base, man. Come on, take it easy. <laughs> hey, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> and a <the> follow-up. <laughs> um, that's good. So I don't know what's going to be happening this week. I can't. I don't have my glasses, so I can't see well right now until I get glasses <laughs> until next week. So we'll see what I can see to edit and what I can actually do. <laughs> so comes out. out. Good, yeah. So we'll, we'll see how we will see all that works out. I might be able to get a lot, but I don't know. Okay. Just it all depends on how how blind I'm going to be. Um, how about you, Mr. Black Iron underscore man? Oh, the other things that, that we need to look at. Uh, we did the, uh, 
the Naga. Yeah, the Naga. Um, not so long ago, so I think now I just have to finish up some other things I've been laying around here. But I'm actually really keen on getting the Bragi out because the Bragi actually just out yeah. there, else out there, so uh, it would be nice to get to the dust. So if you know what the Bragi is, those are wireless, individually wires, uh, wireless uh, earphones. Yeah. Um, so are, in earphones, yeah. Right, right there. So pop them out. They're basically wireless Bluetooth headphones. One connects to Bluetooth, the other connects through a kind of a digital frequency to the other one. Um, but we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll get a video together that introduces to people. And, uh, that Sweet. I can't wait for Sam to drop that this week. <laughs> yeah, most likely it's going to be this week. Oh, oh, praise the Lord. I have some time to get that done. All right. Time. Cool. Um, for me this week, uh, we, had, uh, we did our 4K EVS video. Off training the 4K content. Actually, it looks pretty good in 4K. Um, ZTE Z Max Pro, put our hands on that, and a lot of people are very interested in that phone, so we will have a review next week, most likely around Monday, I think, because I've been playing around with the phone since uh, since we got it. Um, check out Stranger Things on Netflix. Seriously, I absolutely love that show. Uh, we did a review on that. Uh, it's a fantastic show. Uh Reminds me of the 80s, the Goonies, E.T., if E.T. was scary, not that friendly crap. And, um, you know, all that stuff all combined together. Uh, we also have the Icotel Idol 4S, the Moto Z stuff, and Comic-Con stuff. Now, we'll be doing more Comic-Con uh, reactions and stuff because Saturday is the big day in Comic-Con. Marvel has their panel. DC has their panel. We should expect a Doctor Strange, Wonder Woman, Guardians of the Galaxy to and maybe even some Justice League footage. So that's all going to drop today. So uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, as for next week, um, some Microsoft stuff on Monday. Stay tuned. I can't tell you what it is. Um, but uh, it's something has to do with uh, something coming up from MS. And, um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. A few accessories and stuff next week. I just can't remember exactly which ones. But once I have them up, you guys will see it. So. All right, thank you very much for watching, everyone, and also everyone for commenting in the discussion platform that is a chat room. Um, also, if you have any more comments, leave them down below in the, um, uh, I was going to say description, but that would actually be the comment section of the video. Uh, don't forget to check out um, Warren Bowman at bw1.com. You can actually subscribe to his channel. That it is right there, bw1.com, and follow him on Twitter. Uh, same uh, name as well as Sam, aka Black Iron underscore Man, who doesn't have a lower third but a lower white third. Shirt. It keeps on jumping off. Okay, so there you have it, Black Iron underscore Man. That would be uh, Sam right there. Follow him on Twitter. He's part of the Border Work Network. And myself, Thunder E. I uh, follow me on Border Work on YouTube, on Twitter. And uh, we we'll say thank you very much. Join us next week, and always enjoy your entertainment. We love.